I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. We're going for a drive. Two thousand nineteen Volvo XC forty T five R design. Hit him with the horsepower and torque. Two hundred and forty eight horsepower and two hundred and fifty eight pound feet of torque. And how much does it cost? Fifty two thousand six hundred and seventy five dollars Canadian. And a direct conversion to U S is forty thousand dollars U S. Correct. So let's start the review. All right. I wanted to try that. Get it all out there. Yeah. Let us know if you like that. Is this a crossover or is this an SUV? It's a crossover. Crossovers are SUVs. Is the Infiniti QX fifty a crossover and SUV. It's an SUV. This is the same size as the QX50 that I parked next to. Interesting. Isn't it? I feel like this is actually an SUV. It's I, not really I small at all. I cannot verify the statistic, but this is Yuri's <laughs> opinion. And to prove that it's also an SUV, how many boxes does it fit? Let's find out. 11, 12. Where can you get those boxes? Patreon.com slash the straight pipes. Did this fit more than the other Volvo? It did. More than the V90 cross country station wagon. Well, that was seriously impressive. Isn't it? It's like very impressive. Next thing, visor test. Let's find out. It's not gonna pass. No. Three, two, one. No. Does it rewind satellite radio stations? Obviously not, it's a Volvo. Does it fit a small cup of coffee? We've got a Starbucks and a McDonald's and it fits both of them perfectly fine. And a Tim Hortons? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, we'll Whatever. find out later. Today's not the day to test that. That's right. So this is one of their newest models. This is a completely new model from the ground up. And it's targeted at the younger audience. Obviously millennials. I guess the main thing to me about the XC40 is the cool orange interior. Yeah, okay, this is a $100 option on the R design. Are there any interiors from this year that you like more than this? For like a reasonably priced car, we were just no Rolls Royce, that doesn't count. Yes. What interior? The Rolls Royce. I said without that price. Yeah, well, too bad. So nothing, this is the best colored interior of all time. No. I think the color's good, the material not so good. I love it, it's tennis ball. Exactly, it's carpet. It feels like tennis ball to me. Okay, but a tennis ball feels like a car carpet. I guess, there's no just never in this color. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, it's the best. You've got color match floor mats, but we're on the winter mats right now. That's right. And the orange floor mats are made in Poland. Shout out Poland. <laughs> <laughs> Since you're talking about some weird stuff with this model, there's actually a lot of that. Let's get into it. The trunk. The trunk can separate and you have grocery bag hangers. That is my favorite thing. I love grocery bag hangers. And then we've got grocery bag hangers on the side too. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of grocery bag hangers, we also have a bag holder in the glove box that flips out. Man, they designed this car for millennials like me, eh? Yeah, I guess so. And what do you have under your seat? I got a little secret panel. Storage bin. For hiding my millennial lettuce. <laughs> lettuce. Yo, better not be romaine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw, I threw mine out. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Who knows if that's still relevant by the time this video's out. Turns out there's a worldwide epidemic. And everybody's dead. Well, where'd you throw it out? In your garbage bin? We have a garbage bin in here. Yeah, and it's removable. Check this out. Well, it's because it's a garbage bin. There is actual garbage in there, I threw stuff out. And we also have a little card holder here, which is for, I guess, your Tim Hortons Easy Pay card. Or Starbucks. Oh yeah, yeah, they got those too. <laughs> and one more interesting fact about the trunk, the compartment cover folds underneath the carpet. Yeah, that never happens for any car ever. Exactly, so you don't have to like store it somewhere. Let's tackle a few more interior things while we're all in it. All right. This pattern. Best pattern ever. You know what it is? Just, Just squares. Just paint. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. It's not fake carbon fiber. It's not fake brushed aluminum. It's like, hey, here's a painted pattern. I love it. Genius. And then we have some nice textures all around. Everything's pretty fancy. Lots of gloss black. But we don't have gloss black on the steering wheel buttons for once. Yeah, and we had a conversation about this earlier and we both kind of died laughing because we're like, you know, it's finally gone and you can't complain about it, but it does look less premium. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, I, yeah, you kind of get it. I get it. Like it looks premium gloss black, but I would prefer not to have it. So thank you for finally doing this. We do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Yes, we do. Finally. We've got a nice sound system because it is a Volvo. Harman Kardon. And I would like to point out that Volvos consistently have the best stereo systems. They have very good ones. And we actually have wireless charging down here because now I have a phone that supports wireless charging. So look forward to me complaining about that in the future. I do not have a phone that has wireless charging yet. I'm working on it. Hopefully I get the new iPhone XS Max Super Plus. Shout out Pixel 3. Driving position wise, I can get my elbow on the left here and it's pretty comfortable. We do have a really good seating position. I have a big complaint about that. You wanna hit me with it right now or later? Oh, right now. What is it? Your left elbow is significantly higher than your right elbow and it bothers me. That doesn't really bother me. Do you like the seats? I love the seats. They're a little bit hard, 
but they're still pretty comfortable. We did get out of our Rolls Royce recently. Yes, we did. I think everything is a little hard in every car in general. This is very true. But it's got a nice soft clothy pattern. Yeah. Very cool alternative to leather. And the bolsters are nice too. The white stitching and white piping on the seats is also like super nice. And we both have lumbar support even on the passenger side. I've got a question for you. What's that? You know these little things that slide out for your legs or your thighs or whatever? Yeah. Do you use that? I've been trying to use them because manufacturers are putting them in, so I'm trying to figure out why. I don't know if that's just for freakishly tall people or something, or somebody needs more support. I personally hate it and get rid of it every single time. Thanks. If you know exactly what that's for, please leave a comment below. Well, I know it's for thigh support, but I just, I need to find out like if it's comfortable. A specific reason for thigh support. Yes. And since we're talking about the interior, look at this shifter. Okay, it's like the crystal shifters that we have in other Volvos. You gotta click, 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 click for the neutral drive thing, which is super annoying. And the top trim still gets the crystal shifter. But it's leather wrapped, so it's kind of nicer, I think. I wouldn't say it's nicer than the crystal one, so if you're gonna do this, kind of give me the crystal one anyway. I, I wouldn't want the crystal in this. Maybe it was an orange crystal. <laughs> Maybe. But just give me a regular shifter. What do you think of the back seat room? As someone that's six foot one and a half, it's all right. And then I guess some other infotainment stuff before I let you drive and talk about the looks. All right. We've got the same old Volvo infotainment from pretty much every single Volvo. Yes, we do. And I appreciate that they still have Android Auto. Even though it's consistent, it is kind of annoying. There's some things that just really bother me. Like if I want to get to my camera, I need to click three buttons. Really? Yeah, well say I'm in Apple CarPlay, right? And then I click this button, I need to slide left, then I need to click camera, and then say I want my front camera or back camera, then I need to click that button. You're right. I wish there was a camera button up here like in the Porsche Cayenne. Fair enough. And another nitpick with the camera, it doesn't show the 360 camera and the reverse camera at the same time. It's just one or the other. But they are both very high res. Yeah, but it would be good if they showed them both at the same time. Like, I agree. That's yeah. the way to do it. Yeah, it is. And then another nitpick. With the reverse camera, it shows you how close you're getting, but it really warps the bumper. It is very warped. After the Cayenne, I do want to see maybe a warped and a non-warped so it's more clear. An option. Yes. Fair enough. I've got a little complaint about the infotainment. Hit me. So it tends to get cold in Canada. So when I was driving this, it was a little cold. And as soon as I started the car, I couldn't change the climate or the heated seats. I would press the button and nothing would happen until the car warmed up just a little bit. I would love to see a Volvo concept of the whole infotainment turned into a button infotainment. I agree. So after driving the Rolls Royce, they used like hard buttons for everything and it was perfect. And just because they use hard buttons in a Rolls Royce doesn't mean other companies can't use hard buttons in their cars. It's just hard buttons. So you don't have to make them out of leather. Hard buttons, please, guys. Yeah. Please, optional. All right, let me drive. Yes. The power. Let's talk about this engine. It's a four cylinder, two liter, which is found in basically every single Volvo now. Now, since this is the T5, you cannot get any other engine configuration. This is only turbocharged. It is not turbo and super. It is not turbo, super, and hybrid. What's the best part of this turbocharged engine? The blow off valve. Hit me with it. That sounds so good. And the weird thing is, this is pretty much as fast as the V90 cross country that has a supercharger and turbocharger. That's right. In a theoretical timed significant racing event that never occurred. We pushed both <laughs> gas pedals down at the same time while driving next to each other and they were even. That's right. Power delivery is very smooth. This is, to be honest, my favorite engine configuration because it's the least confusing. It's zippy. It is. Inside you feel like you're in a crossover, but outside, like when you see it, you're like, kind of an SUV. Like, it's zippier than it should be. Yeah, this is, I think, the fastest in its class as a crossover, and I really like the speed of this car. I really like the power delivery. I have no issues with it. What I do have an issue with is the transmission. Now, the transmission is an eight speed. If you're not gonna have any fun, you're not gonna use the paddles, you're not gonna use the left-right shifter, which we'll get to in a second, it's fine. The shifts are so smooth, but as soon as you use the paddles, it just takes away from the whole experience because it's so laggy. It won't even shift at redline. If you try to get to six and a half thousand RPM, it'll shift ahead of time no matter what, in like every mode. Exactly, which is typical of all Volvos, so that's why I just don't like the transmissions. Volvo right now is not a shift yourself company. 100% automatic for every Volvo. But let's get back to the transmission quickly. Let's go for it, Yuri. We have paddles in this. Yes, we do. And we have an auto stick transmission. And if you know the Plymouth Prowler, that means you shift left and right to go up and down. It is not called an auto stick in this vehicle. It is called an auto stick in the Plymouth Prowler. And the reason they do that is because it's a joystick pretty much. It goes forward, down, left and right. And that's how they make everything work with the double neutral thing. So whatever, what else can they do? Well, give me a normal shifter. That's what I'm saying. I just want a normal but one. But then you can't put diamonds. Yeah. Because the diamond needs a click button. But we also don't have a diamond here, so whatever. It's the option for a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> now, this car is all-wheel drive, so it'll be completely fine in the winter. That's a very good thing to know for a millennial like me. You're really embracing this millennial term now. Man, 
It's like orange inside. <laughs> the, and so many grocery bag hangers, like it's catered to the Yuri. Yes. And the suspension's also very good. It's not like super stiff. It's not like the BMW X2. That was way too oh, stiff. Oh yeah. Yeah. But like the Mini Countryman JCW, I think this is slightly below that, but that was slightly more fun in terms of handling. Now let's send it into Cliche Corner just to verify that. And the steering is honestly pretty good. I am in dynamic mode, so it does help with the steering and you can change it individual. And then we also have eco mode. Yuri, tell me about eco mode. So when you click eco mode, your gauges change. And what I have found is that the RPM slash eco gauge is very confusing. I have no idea what it's telling me. So I think, I think the way it works is the green thing is how efficient you're being and the needle is like a weird tack. Yeah. So if you like let that. off right now, Coasting, so, coasting ready. ready. By the way, this is the only mode for coasting where it like disconnects, right? Right, okay. So now if you floor it, so your RPM goes, but you stay green, but it moves. Like I don't know what that other little arrow is telling me. I don't know what's going on, Yeah. but it's interesting. I'm gonna go back into dynamic. Overall, between the drive modes, I don't find that much of a difference other than eco being really soft on the pedal. I have noticed that when you're using the pilot assist, when you're in eco mode, it's less suicidal. Yeah, so if someone cuts in front of you, it's not going to accelerate into them. Yeah, and I have another nitpick with the pilot assist. Do you really like this? I love it. I've been trying to use it a lot in the city and on highways, and I just don't like it nearly as much as the other systems. And I'm going to explain to you quickly why. This is straight up one of my favorites. So first off, you can't take big turns as easily as you can in other cars, like even a Kia Hyundai. And when you have radar crews at full distance away, I was coming at a group of stopped cars because it got some traffic and it was going way too fast and didn't slow down near early enough. A lot of cars tend to do that as well. But it was scary. All right. And it does bark at you a lot to put your hands back on the wheel, even if you have your hand on the wheel. If your hand is slightly light, it'll diddle That's true. Diddle I did notice that. And that's pretty much it. All right. So I agree with one of your points out of three. <laughs> well, we will. I do want to do a radar cruise pilot assist test with multiple vehicles. It's just a lot of work to figure that all out. We will do it one we'll day, get in we the promise. future. Yeah. Let us know in the comments which cars you want us to compare for that. Oh, here come all the Tesla comments. What's a Tesla? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about looks. I think it looks really cool. Probably the coolest looking Volvo right now. I think it looks pretty cool. I wouldn't say it's the coolest looking. I really do like Volvo wagons. I think this looks cooler, and I think it's partly because of the way the roof line, how it's black and all that stuff. I like that they gave it a floating roof design without actually floating the roof. And it's cool that it says our design up there. Yeah, that is super cool. It does have the Thor hammer headlights. Every Volvo has that now, which is great. Exactly, very identifiable. And I do like the Volvo wagon slash SUV taillights more than the sedan taillights, which this has. Yeah, I agree. This doesn't have the R-Design wheels on it right now because they are the Winters. Yeah, so the R-Design wheels look really nice, so I will give it full credit for that. The Winters are okay. And besides that, it's just a good looking Volvo. I think I'm kind of turning into an SUV loving guy. Oh, I know, I know. No! But like, no! I think this looks better than the wagons right now. Oh, uh, really? I don't know what to say, man. More boxes. Ah, uh, I'm so disappointed in you, Yuri. I'm judging these cars for people that are buying them. I'm not one of those people. Well, I'm not buying any cars either. I don't have any money, but I have a Honda Element, so I obviously like weird SUVs. Exactly. So. All right. Now let's wrap this up with some competitors that we've driven. The Mercedes GLA 250. This one's way better because the GLA 250 had that super old infotainment with like the button numbers. Oh, I agree. And there was so much plastic in there. This feels like a better car. Oh, this feels like way more modern. It's also faster. What's next? The BMW X2. To be honest, I think they're equal. I like this more. Okay. But I think it's like the same version, but by the BMW company. All right. I think the BMW X2 will handle better, but I really don't think you want a better handling crossover. So I like this over that, and I like this over the GLA 250 as well. What other competitors do we have? Well, we haven't driven any of them. So there's the Audi, the Q3, and there's a couple others. Oh, and the Mini Countryman JCW, which we've driven. That was slightly more fun, but I found it slower, and it did have pop pops, so I did like that, but I would still honestly take this, but that handled better. I'm just, I am suckered by this tennis ball interior. Okay, imagine it didn't have that for $100. I couldn't imagine that. It's not, <laughs> I, there was, there's no way that I would buy one of these without the orange interior. So let's wrap this up. It starts at $44,000, but as tested, as we said, $52,000. Canadian. I think this is very good value for the money. I think so too, because Volvo has become such a premium brand, it costs less than I thought it would. I would honestly pick this over all of the competitors that we've driven. I think so too. And I think it's mostly because of the orange. So don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell. Patreon.com slash the straight pipes and join our YouTube membership. And buy orange carpets. And share this with your friends. Do it. That's the most important one. It is actually. Like literally share this with your friends. Yeah. 
please. <laughs> I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Subscription break. Don't forget subscribe. to subscribe. Subscribe right now. Subscribe. We didn't even. We didn't do that. <laughs>